Welcome back to a view to a grill. I'm Johnny. Today I'm going to show you the five skills to master when grilling on your Weber kettle. First thing you want to master, clean your grill. This grill is dirty. When you see big chunks of your last cook on your grill, then you need to clean it. I would say the most important reason for a clean grill, well, the second most important, sanitation obviously is number one. But number two, a clean grill aids in releasing the protein. When you're grilling and your uh, protein is on a clean grill, the odds are better that it's going to release it cleanly than if your grill was dirty. What I like to use to clean my grill is Citrus Safe Grill Cleaner. You can use this while the grill is still cold. All you have to do is spray it on Give it a couple of minutes to loosen up any of the debris that's on your grill, and then use a scrub brush to scrub it off. Once you're done scrubbing it off, you can then wipe off any excess uh, material that's still on your grate with a clean cloth. And look at this cloth. This is not the stuff you want to be eating for your cook. Now let's look at our grill grates and you can see there is no more debris. The grates are still dark, but that's because this is a properly seasoned grill. It's not a dirty grill. And if we get a wider view of the grill grates, you can actually see uh, some of the grates shining and that's because the metal is exposed. And that's the kind of grate we want to grill on. And the last thing I like to do for clean grates is just spray it with a little bit of canola oil. This is what seasons our grate. Our next skill to master is two zone grilling. All two zone grilling means is we have a hot side where we will sear our food and a cool side where we'll let it rest. Now I'm going to show you three different ways to achieve two zone grilling right now. One way we can set that up is by using the slow and sear. You can see here that the slow and sear is banked all the way to the right, which is going to be our hot zone. On the left, there's gonna be no fire, and that'll be our cool zone. I happen to like the slow and sear so much that it is one of those products that if for whatever reason, if I no longer had it, I would actually go and buy a new one. I like it that much. And if you choose to get one for yourself, I think once you use it, you're gonna say the same thing. To achieve two zone grilling, you don't need the slow and sear. As a matter of fact, you don't need any accessories at all. Let me show you a way to set up two zone grilling without any accessories. All you need to do is get some charcoal and draw this line with the charcoal, reserving about one third of the grill for your hot zone, just like this. Now, once you have that done, all you have to do is fill in that area with your lit charcoal. And there you have it, two zone cooking, no accessories. Another way I like to set up two zone grilling is with the Weber baskets. All I'll do is get the Weber baskets, create a barrier that gives me about one third of the Weber kettle as my hot zone. And then once I have the barrier there, all I have to do is fill that in with the lit charcoal. And that's what we're gonna do today because today I'm actually grilling some hamburgers. Now I did leave a little bit of that charcoal in this area as part of our reserve fuel. The next grilling skill to master, a lot of heat. To start my fire, I like to use the Weber chimney starter. Here's another tip. There's nothing wrong with reusing unspent charcoal from a previous cook. I have some left in another chimney starter and I'll just use that to top off this chimney starter. And we're gonna use some leftover charcoal. I've also gotten to where I use fire starters. The Superior Trading Company brand of Firestarter happens to be my favorite brand right now. And it's 100% natural, and it's also made right here in the USA. Also notice I have this Firestarter sitting up on a chunk of wood. That's because today is a windy day, and having the Firestarter up higher in this cone gives me a better chance on a windy day to start the fire, because on a windy day, the wind will blow the flame flat. And if it does that, it won't hit your charcoal and it won't ignite the coals. To start the fire, I've also gotten to where I use a wind resistant lighter. Now let's get the fire started. 
and in this shot you can actually see that fire just lay over flat in this shot you can clearly see that the flames are actually igniting the charcoal and now here is why i like to start off with a full chimney look at the coals in this shot see how much they've dropped if you remember this is what it looked like before we started the fire and now this is what it looks like after the coals are ready we're actually down about a quarter of what we started with now once all of your coals have turned white that's called ashing over it's time to put that into that space you reserved in your Weber kettle. And once you have it in, we're gonna move it around a little bit in that space we reserved, just so that we'll have a even temperature from front to back. Normally for high heat grilling, I like to keep the top vent wide open and the bottom vent wide open as well. And now I'm sure you wanna know how hot is it? Well, check this out. It's pretty damn hot. Now that we have our two zones set up, the next skill to master is actually managing those two zones. Now remember, we set this up to where the left side is going to be our cool zone and the right side is going to be our hot zone. I'm going to show you two different examples of how to manage two zone grilling. Our first example is going to be with two fish fillets. And then our next example will be with seven hamburger patties for the fish. I'm going to start the fish off on the cool zone. In order to aid my fish from not sticking, I'll use a little bit of canola oil and spray right over the hot zone. Once the fish has cooked a little bit on the cool zone, I'll move it directly over our hot zone. I'm not trying to cook the fish to done over the fire because all I wanna do is get good color on the fish, move it back over to the cool side and close the lid. There is no rule that says you have to do all of your cooking over direct heat. Now let me show you how I manage these two zones when cooking uh, several hamburger patties. And here's another quick tip. When I'm cooking a lot of anything, I like to put them on a rack so that I can move the entire rack at one time. Everything goes on at the exact same time, right? So I'll get the hamburgers on the cool side of the grill. I'll let them cook for a little bit on the cool side. And then when it's time to actually sear these hamburgers, I'll start searing them in batches. So we'll start by moving three over the direct fire. And look at those flames. Do not let these flare-ups scare you, especially when cooking hamburgers. That fire is engulfing your burger, right? And it's actually using the hamburger's own fat to fry that exterior, maximizing the Maillard reaction on your hamburger patty. I'm just moving the hamburgers away from me a little bit because I'm noticing that the grill is hotter on the far side. So I want all of these patties to get some of that flame love on the far side. Now to help you uh, manage this situation, do not use that little tiny spatula out of the kitchen drawer that you use to flip eggs with. You need a long spatula, okay? A long spatula like this one. It doesn't have to be this brand. This is the Dow Strong brand, link below but you need a long one, okay? Don't use a short spatula because you need a spatula long enough that will keep your hand out of the fire. Now I have these patties done to about medium rare. Now let's get the last four patties over the direct side of the grill. And that's where we're gonna talk about how we want things charred and not burned. Back to the fish. Now remember, we were just going for color on the fish. Once the fish got to the color we liked, we just moved it back over to the indirect side. We closed the lid and we let it finish. And look at those grill marks. Those grill marks, they're really nice. And the grill marks give us that perfect amount of char. The space in between the grill marks has gotten a little darker, but nothing on this fish is burned. We're going for charred, not burned. So watch how I rotate these patties because I recognize where the hot spot is. Once I recognize that, I'll take the patty that's closest to me and move it off to the side toward the back. And next, I'll just slide the middle patty towards me just a little bit. 
After that, I'll go and grab the patty furthest away from me, the patty that's in the hottest area of the grill, and put that closest to me. And then finally, I'll take that first patty and put it on the hottest side of the grill. And that helps me ensure that all of my patties get the same color and cook at the same time. One of the reasons why we do burgers in batches is because check out these flames. If you had all seven of these over that hot fire at the same time, that flame will be uh, twice as big as it is right now. And not only that, all of that excess grease will be dripping to the bottom of your Weber kettle and possibly catching on fire. So for me, that is one of the biggest reasons why I don't try to cook all seven patties at one time. It's to help me control all of the uh, flames that are going to be coming from the grease dripping from the patty into the fire. So do your burgers in batches and you'll have, uh, you'll have less problems. Now here's another beauty of our two zone grilling. Since we're grilling burgers today, you're gonna to wanna to cheese your burger. So everything is now on the cool side of the grill and we'll just get our cheese on the burgers. Now, all we have to do is close the lid and let the convection inside of the Weber kettle melt that cheese. Since our fire is so hot in the Weber kettle, we're gonna actually get these crispy, tasty edges on our melted cheese, which is just another layer of flavor on your burgers. Since we had them all on a rack, we'll use our pliers and get them all off at the exact same time. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, why not? Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching A View to a Grill. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, y'all.